stream got changed to a Super Bowl party show? I Don't... just pulled it up. Our pay. Let's see. Yeah, hold on. I have to like. We're good now. We're good. You're good. You're good. Hold on. Yeah, I need to put I up a new Twitch. link. Um, I need to put up a new link. Uh, for YouTube. Ah, God, I love technical difficulties. That's how important the Zeitler news was. It just it could we we couldn't even like wouldn't even allow us to talk about it. <laughs> did that? Did it just break it for everyone? Is that what happened here? Hold on. I need to put out a new YouTube link. Um, are we back now? Hello, Twitch. I saw you complaining enough. Yeah, so okay. Just again. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Um, you want to just start over from the top? Let's just start all of this over again. I'm, I'm fine with to. that. Do it live! We'll all write it. <laughs> we'll do it live. All right. Give me a second. Welcome to the Pride of Detroit POD cast, Pride of Detroit.com, Pride of Detroit on Twitter, Pride of Detroit on Facebook. You know where to find us. This is the second time we are doing this intro, and I am hoping that there won't be a third. So uh, we're just going to dive right into it. We're live on twitch.tv slash Pride of Detroit and on youtube.com slash at Pride of Detroit. I'm Chris Perfett, the adequate host at Chris Perfett on Twitter. Been with you since day one. Going to keep being with you all the time, hydrating, staying fresh, doing things talking lions the lions have just signed a new guard and we're going to talk about him in a second along with more free agency talk and looking around the nfc north let's bring in the crew stand in crew here today we've got two guys taking some needed time off morgan cannon joining us at m cannon 313 and his partner miko scott at the miko scott our intrepid youtube crew hello fellas good afternoon on, man. happy to do this a second time I know <laughs> a second time we'll do it a third fifth whatever we have to but I don't think our audience wants to so I'm not sure why twitch is breaking and I don't intend to find out let's talk instead about Kevin Zeitler and it's the second time I've had to pause and remember how to say his name uh we were making this rundown and I was trying to figure out what the Lions we were going to recap a lot of free agency and we still are and one of the things i was going to write was what have the lions not addressed in free agency and i was penciling in guard until they did this kevin zeitler 34 formerly of the baltimore ravens pro bowler uh nice fat juicy 82.5 pl pass blocking grade from pro football focus back in 2023 uh intends to fly to detroit tonight Monday, signed with the team on Tuesday, pending a physical. This is a fairly big move. We have to figure out, the. Uh, we have to see the money still. But um, I think the general consensus right now here, if I'm just gauging Morgan and Miko, seems to be, uh, Morgan, you go first, seems to be pretty happy with this, uh, with this signing. Yeah, it was one of the ones that, like myself, Jeremy, and a few others had circled like, like if we wanted to, if the Lions wanted to just do a one-year like flyer, plug-and-play veteran, then Zeitler's your guy. Um, it's he's not going to prevent them from drafting anyone uh, early. I still think that's definitely on the table. Um, but yeah, he he can start. He's been a pro um, and started since he entered the league back in 2012 with the Bengals, and he started ever since. Like you said, rarely misses games. Uh, I'm excited because he's going to project as your right guard. You slide Graham Glasgow over to left guard and you have your starting five, right, Miko? Yeah, that's kind of the the overall opinion that I had with this signing. And Chris, I was right there with you when we were kind of going through the rundown of the show. And then you start looking at, okay, what do the Lions still need? Guard, left guard specifically is what stood out. And Kevin Zeitler, absolutely, like Morgan said, high on the list if you're looking for a veteran that's proven, that's played at a high level throughout his career. The only thing that kind of kept him a little bit lower on my list personally was what Morgan said. He's primarily played right guard, but Graham has shown the versatility in his career to be able to slide, you know, across that offensive line. So essentially that's all you're going to ask him to do. Move over to left guard. You allow Kevin Zeitler to man that right guard position. And more importantly, and I think that's something that a lot of fans should consider, you now have a veteran guard presence to be, um, you know, a mentor to the likes of Corby's, of Colby Sorstall, to the to the likes of Coyote Awashika and any potential rookie that you decide to draft in this upcoming draft class. But also equally important is now the Lions get to go into the draft and not necessarily have a pressing need at any given position. They can definitely continue to go with this best player available strategy, you know, whether it's at pick 29 or throughout the rest of this draft. 
Yeah, I don't think this takes a guard off the board for them at all. But still, uh, one of the big fascinating things to talk about, and I think you brought it up beforehand, Morgan. Um, he hasn't Zeitler, Zeitler hasn't had many snaps at uh, only like a couple snaps at left guard. So yeah, I don't think he. The more logical is that Graham Glasgow moves over there, and Graham's shown you his versatility so far. Um, again, still leaves room for a left guard to be drafted as well, too. Just kind of a, a nice big... But I I want to focus on Kevin himself just because this is this has been a... He's a bit of an Iron Man. He hasn't really missed a whole hell of a lot of snaps, and I'm knocking on wood here. He is 34 now. They have to go through the physicals, and that's going to be a pending thing. But talk about some depth. Talk about a guy who is reliable, dependable, and from my quick talk with some Ravens people I know nothing like nothing but good things to really say he was kind of without a home here coming into free agency his contract had expired expired with the Ravens he was out here kind of making a bit of a case for himself that he should come back with a team somewhere it hadn't really percolated if it would be I think he was hoping to really be back with the Ravens but uh, Lions swoop in here, and it's, as you guys say, it's another one of these Brad Holmes one-year deals, uh, kind of get sneaky in here, but not something where you're committing long-term to something. It continues to be the, the hallmark of Lions free agency, which is it's short-term. Yeah, you, yeah. Graham, Graham and uh, Zeitler are both older, so yeah, like you said, uh, Miko and Chris said that don't, it, it's not going to stop them from drafting an interior offensive lineman early. And we know about Frank's injury history and, you know, he's creeping up there in his late twenties too, which sounds crazy to say out loud, but it's true. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is big and it just reinforces like the, the strength of this team, right? Like you, you want to have someone really like strong in there because you, that's the, that's what makes the, that's what's the straw that stirs the drink. Right. So having him, I'm sure it's appealing to Zeitler too. Hey, you know, come, come play a year between, Frank Ragnow and the best right tackle in the entire league so and maybe the best center so it, it's got to be pretty appealing right Miko yeah I would say so and then on top of that the Lions play an offense that really caters to what he does well with which what which is what Chris was pointing out at the top of this you know an 82.5 you know pass uh, blocking grade in PFF this football team throws the ball very well obviously yes they're very run focused first mm -hmm. But with play action and and having, you know, a Panay Sewell, having a Frank Ragnow, Kevin Le Zeitler is going to have probably like some of the easiest times with some of his pass blocking sets between those two guys. So um, I think this can almost set up the Lions passing game to just take another step forward because, you know, you have a guy in there, like Chris pointed out, hasn't missed a ton of games, is a constant professional, has always been near the top of the league in that, you know, in, in terms of pass protection. This is a lot of good things for this offense to continue being the success that it has been with Jared Goff at the helm and, you know, Ben Johnson calling the plays. Some funny exactly. stuff about, yeah, some funny stuff about him. I agree with all that. And, like, again, I feel like the way the NFL is going, you are seeing more pass rush um, potential coming from up the middle these days is why Frank Ragnow has earned the money that he has been and why he's such a pivotal piece linchpin to, this, to the Lions pass rush. But Zeitler himself, He's a guy who, like, he was a bit of a surprise to go in the first round back in 2012. Um, I think he expected to go probably in day two, but the Bengals picked him up, I believe, pick 27. Um, someone who's really bounced around a lot more than he probably should. Because, like, after his four years of the Bengals, he si signs a five-year deal with the Browns, but then gets traded to the Giants um, and then released uh, in 2021. Ravens pick him up and he does very well there for two years, but they don't extend his contract. They missed the deadline to extend his contract after three very productive seasons. He's so I, on one hand, that's like you see him bounce around, but on the other, that means I, I like the idea that he could probably be someone you plug in right away. Lines take a little bit of time to gel and develop, but I don't, I think it'll be very fascinating to see him. He's just someone who has been fairly well loved where he's gone and like the production he brings to an offensive line so lines keep getting richer on the offensive line i love it yeah i'll be excited to see a little bit of his tape and see how he functioned like in the run with that you know uh, in that baltimore offense like that'll be i want to watch that because we obviously his pff grade I'm, i don't put a ton a ton of stock in 
PFF grades when it comes to offensive linemen, but uh, with that, those are just really impressive pass blocking numbers. So, yeah, I do want to see like how's he look in space. Like, is he going to be able to pull like uh, Graham Glasgow did, like Jonah Jackson did, uh, like Frank does and Panay? So, yeah, I want to see that for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, Morgan, that's probably like the only like concern that I might have. And it's a small concern, but like in the the difference between his pass blocking grade and his run blocking grade isn't like astronomical, but it's it's definitely visible, right? You have like a high 80 or low 80s in pass blocking, high 60s in, in run blocking. And someone who's 34 years old, I think there could be some questions about, okay, like how is he, like you said, how is he out in space with pulling or is he more just like power, you know, type of running uh, scheme with with the Ravens I think that'll be the next thing that'll be most interesting to see with like how he fits with this offense because like I said as much as they have gotten so much better at throwing the ball they still want to run the ball at people so you know your guards still need to be able to you know occupy blockers they still need to be able to get to the second level and you know it's going to be important to see how that aspect of his game translates here in Detroit uh, more, more to discuss. Only allowed 16 pressures back in 2023. Uh, one QB hit allowed, two sacks allowed. Um, just again, very, very productive in that regard. Only about four penalties as well. Oh, on about nine, oh, just shy of about a thousand offensive snaps. So we'll have more on him later. We're starting to get into our free agent series of first bites. I know we've already lined up a Bengals guest here, so we'll probably get to Zeitler a little bit later, although we, they might be able to talk some early Zeitler with the Bengals guest as well. And speaking of Bengals, that was the other uh, pickup the Lions had, DJ Reader. I know we've already d- done our podcast on it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get out my thoughts, and I don't I don't know if Morgan or Miko, you guys have had a chance to talk on him yet. Um, but... Yeah, it's another one that I just like. These are two very big pickups for the trenches, um, especially for what the Lions want to do, which is just an arms race in stopping the run. Especially in a year where the two two multiple NFC teams, NFC North teams, you know, improved their run game here with pickups in free agency, and the Lions pick up DJ Reader, who just likes to eat the run. So. Yeah, I had said last week when we were, you know, Morgan and I did a video on YouTube where we were kind of recapping like the first day of free agency. I was very big on the Carlton Davis signing or trade at the time. Mm-hmm. This signing of DJ Reader like literally clears that that move by leaps and bounds, right? Like mm-hmm. this is absolutely the move that the Lions needed to make to not just like keep that run defense like, you know, high in the NFL, but like to actually push this defense forward, to actually make things easier for other people on this defense. That's what DJ Reader does by simply putting him next to an Aline McNeil, you know, near Aiden Hutchinson, like things on this defensive line and this defense as a whole feels like it can be um, solved in a little bit simpler from a scheme perspective because you have two guys in the middle that can play the run really well, but also create a lot of pressure and get after the quarterback and just cause a lot of havoc, you know, in, in the backfield. So this whole, you know, narrative or this whole situation where like, you know, guys like, you know, Aleem or Aiden have to deal with double teams. Well, now you have DJ reader and it's like, okay, who are you going to double team? Because somebody has to get them one-on-one and between those three guys, not to mention uh, if, if Marcus Davenport can stay healthy, you're going to have like a lot of difficult decisions on your hands as an offensive coordinator, as an offensive line of trying to determine where you're going to slide your protection, who you're going to allow these one-on-one matchups with. Because if you are if you choose the wrong guy, someone else is going to cause a lot of havoc in your backfield. Exactly, Miko. I've watched two games of readers so far. It was just from last year. And I deduced a couple things really quickly. One, you're not going to block him with one human. It's just not going to happen. I don't care who it is. You probably need a forklift to to move him before you did it with like one person. It's just not going to happen. And then even when there's two, he's really difficult to uproot. Um, He's super powerful with his punch. He looks like he's got like 10 pound weights in his hands. Like when he like punches people and like swipes, swipes people. So I'm excited to watch more of his uh, film and, yeah, I'm excited for all the reasons you listed. And really, like the Lions were really good at stopping the run last year, right? Because they devoted a lot of resources to stopping the run. DJ Reader makes it so 
you don't really like you might not have to devote as many resources right you might just be able to stop the run with a four-man front and like we all know that helps the back end out so yeah it's exciting lot to get to here we'll talk some more free agency and and uh and break down more of these players as we go along we'll talk some contract numbers in a little bit on kevin zeitler as well but um let me just ask you guys right now as we now enter into week two of free agency not even a full week of it i think we've kind of let the tampering period kind of warp our perception of when exactly free agency starts and i always love this time of year when we get the uh it's like oh we have to accuse the atlanta falcons of tampering it's like what are you talking about what are we doing here we're just pushing we're just keep pushing the number back like i always like the tale of the of the went before the tampering period where guys would sign at like 12 like 1203 a.m and it's like okay so they got the deal done in three minutes is that what you're saying you sure about that do we really need to do we're this? Smarter than, we're, we're smarter than that. I know. <laughs> this tampering allegation of the Falcons is going nowhere. Um, but let's talk about free agency itself as we enter, yeah, it's second Monday of it. Uh, what did the Lions, you think, in your minds, uh, Miko, we'll start with you, improve the most on their team right now? Now, I, I know it's a lot of, like, short terms we've got the mo uh, mo of brad holmes and free agency now it's going to be short-term stuff he's going to prioritize the draft first and foremost for a lot of these positions but have short-term answers even if they aren't able to answer it allows them to go into the draft flexible but if we're just looking at the roster here today putting the put the draft aside what have they addressed the most and where how do you think they still have yet to really answer for or like remains a weakness for the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I'll, I'll start where I think they've improved the most. And I don't want to say necessarily a specific position group, but I want to say like, as far as the secondary is, is concerned, I do think they have more competent play there. And I think they have more options available to them outside of just like, hey, we're stuck with Cam Sutton guarding, you know, their best wide receiver. And then we're just going to shuffle CB2 until we find something that isn't completely terrible. I think with the addition of Carlton Davis, I think with the addition of Amrick Robertson, I think they have a lot of of quality pieces in that secondary, um, bringing back Emmanuel Mosley, giving him plenty of time to get healthy, and we'll see what he's like after you know tearing both ACLs. But if he can even play again, just a, a serviceable you know reserve role, I think that secondary becomes what much more competent in terms of, again, going up against, you know, elite wide receiver groups so that you can actually match up with, you know, your best corner against their best wide receiver. And you don't feel like, you know, Morgan, you kind of mentioned this earlier about how the defense had to uh, basically put so many resources into stopping the run. They also had to put a lot of resources into disrupting the pass. Now, I don't think you have to do that nearly as much with the type of investment that Brad Holmes has made into that secondary group, specifically looking at the corners. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And I stand by everything you said. That's where I was going to go. Defensive depth in general. Like, you know, even if, you know, your starters are Cam Sutton and Carlton Davis and say Carlton Davis or Cam Sutton does miss a couple of games, like they miss three or four games with an injury, it's going to happen. It's a high, you know, that position sees a lot of injuries you have a Meek Robertson, right? Like he has starting experience both on the outside and the nickel. Um, you have Brian Branch, you have Emmanuel Mosley who might get healthy and be able to provide even more depth. So I really like that. And uh, to pivot into something not so rosy, um, one thing I still am worrying about is like the third safety position. Um, because I know me and Miko, if y'all haven't noticed, we do a lot of content on YouTube and we're both very excited about Ifatu Melifanwu and Kirby Joseph. Um, but I, I would like to see a third safety and preferably a vet come in, you know, Quandre Diggs, question mark. That'd be nice. <laughs> the reunion, the reunion that everyone hopes to happen pretty much. Yep. Let's do it. Sign yeah. me up. He's still like, I, there's Quandre Diggs. The party store near me has a Quandre Diggs panel still. It's like Steve Eisenman, Ben Wallace, Quandre, and I <laughs> see it all the time. It's my party store and I love it. I'm like, Quandre, let's do it. Bring him back. Yeah, would be nice, but um, I I don't know if the Quandry Diggs thing will really happen, just given where this roster is at right now. Um, so what do you? So that's that's kind of what they 
think you've addressed and what you've improved the most. What let's let's put all the signings on the table. So we got Amik Robinson, Robertson, we've got CJ mm-hmm. Reader, Kevin Zeitler. Don't let recency bias hit you here. By the way, Carlton Davis also restructuring his contract was the other news we got here today. Um, moving some money around. It's not he's not being a team player and saving the team money. Let's let's be very clear about that. He is going to still he's actually I think getting more of his money up front by the Lions convi- converting it into a signing bonus and kicking some like uh dead cap to uh 2025 i believe is how it works it, it just is rem- it's taking the void years and accelerating it to the 2025 cap so it's, it's 20, 2025 and 2026 and then if he's not retained next year then both of those come due for 2025 yes is how that works yeah so it just more money here. for him up front but it still eases the cap gives the lions about um lowered it from about i believe what would have been a four uh, just over a 14 million uh cap hit 14.5 14.5 what do they save on that i think they save about four mil at four and a half million or so i, I believe it was like four and a half either yeah, it was like yeah, four and a half yeah. or six and a half like somewhere between four and a half and six i think yeah. something like that yeah so we've got carlton davis we've got amik robertson we've got dj reader we've got kevin zeitler uh am i missing something else i'm leaving the re-signings out of here for now uh, Marcus Davenport. Marcus you know, they, Davenport. They brought him. Yeah, we'll we'll include we'll include you know, and I know Carlton Davis is a trade, but we're just going to do acquisitions here. So yeah. of those, what is the one that you think is the most valuable that the Lions have done here uh, after for after about a week? I mean, right, I think I already DJ tipped Reader. my. I was going to say oh, like go I, I'm right there with <laughs> you. Like I was going to say, I think I already tipped my hand earlier. It's DJ Reader, and it's like by a healthy margin too, like by a very healthy margin. Right. And it's twofold, right, Miko? And I know we've talked about this at length. If the Lions were to get a guy like DJ Reader, and this is the dream, like if you get a DJ Reader and don't get twisted, he has some flexibility. He can he can obviously play the nose and occupy double teams and two gap, uh, which is vital to being a good run stopping team. But he can also play the three tech and create some penetration and cause some havoc in there. So but ultimately you improve two positions here because Aleem McNeil playing the three tech the vast majority of the time is a good thing for the Lions defense and a bad thing for opposing offenses. Not to mention the linebacker room. I know someone mentioned it earlier about Alex Anzalone was excited about reader. I bet he is because let me tell you, man, when you got a big boy in front of you there eating space and keeping you clean, it makes linebacking a heck of a lot easier, like night and day. All right. Uh, so let's take a break. On the other side, we'll talk some more about Kevin Zeitler. Uh, I want to get into the contract extension we got for two people. Maybe you missed it on the weekend. Maybe you didn't. But it is a, another big sign of faith and uh, and a commitment to stability from the Detroit Lions that we'll talk about. Plus, I want to talk about a couple of uh, quarterback changes that have happened here in the NFC North. And just more Lions uh, free agency talk to come down the pike here. So that'll be up next in the Pride Detroit POD cast. But first, we have to talk about meat. We've got a lot of meat here. I've got I've got new meat here with Morgan and Miko. And that's why the Pride Detroit podcast is brought to you by Righteous Felon Craft Jerky. It's the jerky that fuels your Detroit Lions. That's right. Righteous Felon Jerky and Meat Sticks are available to Lions players at the training facilities at Allen Park because each two-ounce bag of jerky has 16 to 20 grams of protein. Each stick has 8 grams. If it's good enough for the Lions, it's going to be good enough for you too. They're based in in Westchester, Pennsylvania, using locally sourced all-natural black Angus beef with superior quality and unique flavors that go beyond your stereotypical jerky offering. Like, uh, let's see here, what do I got? Uh, my bag's way over there. I was going to show you the Truffalo Bill. The truffle flavored beef jerky. Where else can you get truffle flavor? I don't know. From truffles? Psst, who needs that? It's on meat. So go to righteousfelon.com. Use the promo code POD15 at checkout. You'll get 15% off your order at any time. Not your first order, not your second, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. Any order you want each time you use the code. It helps us out and it gets you meat. I can't think of a better deal. I really can't. POD15 at RighteousFelon.com. Use that promo code there. Get yourself some meat. We will be right back on the Pride of Detroit POD cast. Oh, 
Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize it was going over the, the uh, air when I was opening that thing. I kind of get used to the uh, canceling, the audio canceling on Zoom. on Zoom. And I apologize for whatever was happening on Twitch at the start. So, uh, yeah. People want to guess what I got out of the box? Or I think I might have accidentally shown it. Is it like a like a cup? I'm getting tiki, tiki mugs. Cup? I'm getting tiki mugs. I actually got another nice. on the way. I was hoping it was the other one I got off eBay. Um, this one's really good. This is like an Orchards of Japan one. Um, no, Orchards of Hawaii. Um, I, th I think I bought a couple of these. I really wanted to do Mai Tais this week. Um, I was hoping the other one would come in uh, that I am getting in literal Honolulu blue. Oh, that's dope. So oh, that's yeah. going to be my game day chalice from here on out, and probably what I drink while on the uh, on stream. Bro, I need a chalice. <laughs> like anybody else, remember like I think it was like in like the mid two thousands where like obviously like pimp chalices were like yeah pimp like, chalices, the rage. Yes. <laughs> and like you could literally get one from like well I think I, I think I got mine from like Spencer's. The fake, uh, the a, fake jewels and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a, I got a Harry Potter Turvis right here. You know what I'm saying? I do Whoa, have a lion's one? Turvis that's like in black. <laughs> um, I have a lion's one too, but it's on the, it's on the drying. I feel too. like what's taken over from that has just been like really <laughs> steady, heavy, like good thermoses and water bottles. Like we had the, tr we had the uh, yeah. Stanley ones, which really confused me for a while because people were talking about Stanley cups, and I'm like. What? Wait, hold on. What? Bro, like I'm uh, so I was so confused because like I just yeah. got a tumbler last like oh, I think yeah. it was like the right. year before. And it's like a nice cup. And like people are like, no, Stanley's. And I'm like, what what we yeah, what just, just like like it was before that I it was Yeti's like, too. Yeah, I feel like these cups are becoming like iPhones. Like whenever like the latest <laughs> iPhone update yeah. or like iPhone comes out, like yeah, everyone one, has to go get it. This one I picked up, I got this at the uh LA Country Club when I went to the US Open with my dad like this is like clean canteen this thing's huge and it's awesome but like yeah no I don't yeah someone's saying Tumblr FOMO is real <laughs> I can't RGA find my Yeti I can't find it I don't know what I did with it RGA 418 his run blocking grade in 2023 was a 59.7 so it's about average Zeitler's I mean um where he makes his money though is as a pass pro though like he's always like I went back and looked at some numbers and I want to look at some more film to get a better idea but he's had better run blocking years like it was a 67.5 in 2022 68.7 in 2021 excuse me so yeah. it's all over it's so not, I was looking for reasons yeah. why he was cut um money this is actually like, from our own no this is actually from Kevin uh, oh, Eck on baltimoreravens.com um, let's see here. Ravens basically signed, uh, saved about 8.5 million in dead money on the 2024 cap. Yeah. Um, he would have gotten, I think it was about 4 million in dead cap was the, his number for next year for this year. And now they've just kind of voided the years on that. So, I mean, yeah, it's like, so it feels more like yeah. a cap casualty than anything that's, uh, going on here. And the Ravens are expensive because they've been good for a while. Like, oh, I'm sorry, the 8.5 be... includes a couple of the players, so it's just four million from Zeitler himself. Yeah, I think they're just getting tight because they're where the Lions should be in like another two or three years, where they've drafted well and they got to pay these dudes, and you got to sometimes let some veterans walk. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, exactly I was gonna say like, like when the... oh yeah, I was gonna, gonna say like when a guy is like 34, like I think like you like the the penny pinching quote unquote, like really starts to kick in, right? Like wow. the Ravens are, are, are a playoff contending team, regardless of whether Kevin Zeitler is probably on that team. And so if you're, if you're trying to save some cost, you can probably look at your 34 year old guard and be like, listen, we would love to bring you back, mm -hmm. but if he's not willing to take a pay cut, then yeah, you just probably just go find another, another option, you know, signed another, signed another offensive lineman yeah. that maybe is a little bit younger um, or just draft someone. Hopefully like mm -hmm. the Lions will still do. Yeah. All right, let me go some through some alerts here, get us caught up on everything, and hopefully I don't crash the uh, stream again. So give me one second to find our tab. So let me start. This is mostly going to be Twitch. YouTube, we see you as well, so we'll get to some of those alerts. Junk Trunk 79 has been with us for 25 months using his Prime subscription, which you can do by attaching your Amazon Prime account 
to your twitch.tv account if you are over there mm. using his prime for 25 months with the words lfg de parente prime for 16 months uh chops 27 has been tier one with us for 11 months just says dj reader all caps luxtables 17 months with us here says let brad cook and hendon hook Dr D uh drosso s watch this i just want to say watch this because this takes like a bajillion years for jeremy to get to i'm just gonna get through it real quick D R O S O, uh, I can't even say your name. Drosos M J has 15 months rebuilding since 1957. Using his prime subscription for 14 months here says I thought Brad Holmes wasn't trying to win in March. I don't exactly see any of these like big like March splashes. They're big for us. We like anything that comes across here because we're just sloppy like that. But. Um, I don't know. It's not like they went out and got like a big time quarterback or one of these big running backs out here or God knows they haven't touched any of the wide receivers on the market. I was going to say, like, I think his signings have been impactful. I think they've been a little more impactful than maybe they were in his first two seasons, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. Like DJ reader is huge and it, and it, and it perfectly fits a need that the lions had going into the off season where you're just like, they need someone more consistent to play next to, you know, Aleem. And so as much as like I wanted them to go out and get Christian Wilkins, like I kind of knew in the back of my mind, they're not going to go out there and spend that kind of money. So you go get someone who is still a top, what, 10, 15 player at his position. Yeah. And, and you slide that next to an, a, 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 you know, quickly developing Aleem. Like Aleem is coming off one of his better seasons. And probably, like I've been saying this, I think Elim would have been a pro bowler had it not been for that injury where he had to miss a couple games. So established veteran next to young developing player is, is just a recipe for success. And then you, you're you just filling like obvious vacancies on this roster. Like I said, you put a lot of resources into that secondary that was an issue this offseason or this past season. And now you that 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 group looks more competent. I don't know if it's a strength per se, but it looks way more competent than it, than it did last year. Reader learned from the OG too, man. Reader got drafted by the Texans way back when they had Vince Wilfork, who's arguably the greatest nose tackle to ever play. And then this could be really. I'm glad you brought up. Someone brought up Broderick Martin, and I love that because like that's like the perfect person for Broderick Martin to learn from. Yeah. And yeah, dude, like he's already the best run stuffer on the team. Getting Reader has been my definitely my favorite signing. I'm glad we talked about that. It's he's been fun to watch. And put someone it, brought it up. Um, he he played baseball at Clemson too. Put a pin in the yeah, uh, like 300 pounds. Put a pin yeah, in 350 or whatever the hell he is. Put a pin in the word Texans. We'll come back to that in a second because I do like talking uniforms and I have some axes to grind here. Um, rebuilding since 1957 been us using prime uh sorry i read that one already uh prince gold and nuts been with us for a full solid year on twitch thank you windy city meatball has been tier one for 30 months uh eman three uh thank you for the follow on twitch j dubs 2006 38 months with the boys love you guys thank you j dubs uh jc2533 Eight months with us as nearly complete roster before the draft. Never seen that before. I don't know if I'd call it complete, but it's definitely not. It's it's a steady roster. There's no part that screams you must draft this or else in the roster, which I think is probably the way to look at this. Um, let's see here. Brett Whitefield, our old, our good friend Brett, been with us 13 months and says, let's go. Oh. Lions Wow, Tier 3, one of our rare Tier 3 subscribers for 54 months. Can't thank you enough for the generosity, Lions Wow. Uh, Lions FTW, Lions for the win. Thomas J. Hutchins, Hutchins, been with us for 17 months, says, Shocked, it's vets and free agency and bringing in the understudies in the draft, I guess. Don't hate it, but seems out of character for this front office. I don't see it as completely out of character. Um, I think it's kind of been what they've been doing doing which move the zeitler move yeah i uh, again i i, I but this, this feels very brad holmes -like. yeah and again yeah, i think dude, the, the, the key right is like it's one year deals one year two year <clears throat> deals we we talk about it all the time yeah so yeah it's hey, a one year it's like a one year transition deal right where mm -hmm. you get a good player for a year hopefully you can find someone in the draft that 
you know, again, that you can draft to learn and, and slowly develop so that you don't have to just throw them in there day one. Worst case scenario, someone gets hurt and they and they do get to play, but that's like probably like best case scenario. Worst case and like worst case scenario is that he's just a mentor to the likes of Corby Sorsdal, ah, Colby Sorsdal and Coyote Awasika. Like, and he can, those players can develop and learn from a, a, a really good guard that's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Comeback Trapper said, you know, Brad did his homework so he can play with his new toy. He's going playmaker early. Book it. <laughs> hey, man, I wouldn't put it past him. Like, I'm not. Bro, only I said that. Positions. Yeah, go, I, I know you think that. There's only a couple of <laughs> positions that I think uh, Brad wouldn't take. It would be no quarterback early. Mm -hmm. No, no running back early. Mm -hmm. receiver receiver tight end on the on the books on the on the table all offensive line on the table all d line on the table no linebacker unless it's an edge rush or like a sam then you know what i mean but other than that that's it man other than that everything's on the table in my opinion Let's see here. i would Except say Kendrick. tight end off the table probably what if like what if something stupid happens though and bowers is there at 29 you know what i'm saying it's like there's kind of a i mean i, I know they did they resign it was shane zilstra i think it was but like i mean their I tight end is yeah. pretty good right te2 now. Got, is it, not i i i don't think mm -hmm. te2's in in solid stone yet no but i think like I, if you if you take tight end at 29 i mean it'd be a lot i agree people would over out, over an x Brad. yeah yeah like over an yeah. x though like there's some there's the possibility. I guess we don't. We genuinely don't know, yeah. but there's the possibility so, that there could be some good X's available yeah. at twenty nine. Coleman, Beyond Coleman. Yeah. Uh, Darth Tater, been with us sixteen months. Sixteen months says Lions Super Bowl twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. I don't know about that. Uh, Kenjamin, thirteen, thirty two months, thirty three in a row. I mean, thirty three total months with us. El Gato Diablo, Prime, twenty one months. Let my man Brad, Mother Truck and Holmes, cook. We also have new subscribers yeah. over on YouTube. Holla at Dre, Arnis Hamzagic, Matt Baker, and Hoagie Boy. Cattle Snacks. Cattle Snacks said no quarterback, running back, inside linebacker, kicker, kicker punter, or long snapper. That's where I'm at. Everything else. Even though tight end's low, I would agree with Miko, but... That's the way Brad likes to go into the draft, man. We've been saying it. I feel like we say it too much and it gets redundant, but he wants to go into the draft not having any glaring needs so he can completely go into his little box of horrors and, you know, shake the league down one more time, man. That'd be nice. Have yeah, I have I've, I just have this weird feeling that it is going to be like a wide receiver. Unless it's like, unless one of these offensive linemen that's like really good falls Slips, or yeah. or he can like get up you know trade up a couple spots yeah i feel like wide receiver just makes the most sense you know we already talked to y'all about the 11 the lines 11 personnel if they take a receiver it would be receiver like keon coleman or whoever jameson williams amon ross st brown uh sam laporta and jameer gibbs or david montgomery take your pick and Lions are going to score a shit ton of points. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, people, uh, good boy CJ, people who are saying that Keon can't separate is ridiculous because I, I watched him at Michigan State separate. Man, people say whatever easily. they want. People say whatever they want on, on, on. Quarterback play matters, man. People say whatever the fuck they want now on, on draft <laughs> stuff. Like people, pe True. like people can look at a tape of Caleb Williams and just start chewing on the curb. Be like, why didn't he throw the crosser? Well, motherfucker, <laughs> he can't throw the crosser because a, it's not designed for it. And B, the right guard crumpled like, sh like, like aluminum foil two seconds, like less than a half a second into the play. That's why he didn't throw the crosser. <laughs> like, I don't want to turn this like too far into the draft, but like Chris, you are the, the USC guy, like yeah. your thoughts on Caleb Williams. Cause like, uh -oh. I'm, yeah, just tell me what you think. I'm not even going to tell you what I think. I, tell me what you I think. I am fighting with Lions fans who I think like, look, can the Bears screw it up? Sure, absolutely. But he is quarterback mm -hmm. number one. He is probably the best, best prospect out there to come out in a good hot minute. Um, Besides Amon and, Ross St. Brown, of course. <laughs> no, I mean just – I'm sorry. Let me let me try that. Quarterback, quarterback prospects. One of the best quarterback mm -hmm. prospects I've seen. 
And if you are trying, and if you're trying to say that, like, there's a problem with him on, on so something, like, you really need to back it up. I really, really, really need you to back it up. Because what's happening a lot with Caleb Williams has nothing to do with his play. We seem to be just killing him for weird personality things. First off, there's the people out there who want to kill him on the Painted Dales and crying with his mom. I don't have anything for you. Just go ahead and, like, eviscerate the kid's mascul failures of masculinity or whatever dumb thing you live for. On the other hand, if you're saying he's too cocky because of what he said at the at the at the combine, you are ridiculous. You're absolutely yeah. ridiculous. That is a um, that is that's a that's just a competence you want to see. A a that your your arrogant your he's arrogant is another person's he's confident. So I don't know what to really do with that. As far as his on field play, like he has an improv level that I haven't really seen from a lot of other quarterbacks right now. And there's, I, I feel like I just have to do defensive stuff because of how bad the rest of USC's offense was. That yeah. first year he was at USC, he did have Jordan Addison, and that was fantastic. But that second year where the wheels kind of came off for USC, like that line was awful. That line was terrible. Like, so how much of how much of his like playmaking is like? In your opinion, it's just grade A, like good quarterback play versus like improvisation. Because I feel so, like yeah. the 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 highlights that you see of him that gets like floated around is a lot of improv stuff. And sure. I'm I'm curious on like how much of it is just like <sighs> it, he can work well in structure too. I think he can work well in structure too because I think the issue has first off there there was some stuff where he could get those connections in that first year at USC and at Oklahoma. Um, my friend Bo knows him a lot better just because he was watching him at Oklahoma and I, I wasn't. Um, the big thing is that Lincoln Riley's attempt to make the offense work was so vertical. And in that second year, he just didn't have the line or the time to go that vertical that it becomes a lot of improv. I really do mean yeah. it. There were a lot of times where Caleb Williams had to single handedly win SC football games because the defense was apparently not practicing tackling in, 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 practice i'm not making that up lincoln riley don't doesn't believe in live tackling in practice it pisses me off and the offense sounds like sounds like sounds like big 12 football to me <laughs> it's very except west to coast the pac 12 <laughs> yeah yeah i it's just very west I, coast of him. I i i mean to say this because i see some people already being like you're being ridiculous it's the bears like i hate to say it the bears are in a good position to get a very good quarterback prospect He's got a can of an him. arm. He's got improvisation levels. Can the Bears screw it up? Sure. Could he not pan out to oh, be yeah. an NFL quarterback? Sure. We've got questions about Trevor Lawrence right now, and I all thought that Trevor Lawrence was, like, the guy who wasn't going to miss, right? We did. But we I did. Think, we labeled him Andrew Luck and everything. You're right. But I feel like this isn't, this isn't someone you're just, like, that has a huge amount of holes to him versus someone like C.J. Stroud when he came out or – Bryce Young, and granted, C.J. Stroud had a very impressive year. Uh, this is hard to do, man. This is hard to do, but I think, like, if you hear any... The, 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 I, I basically put it this way, because if you start to hear anyone trying to talk Drake May as the better prospect, or Jaden Daniels, God forbid, as the better prospect over Caleb Williams, smack them. They're wrong. We don't need to entertain other options. You don't have any evidence. You have nothing to really bring to the table other than just call someone ridiculous. Like, bring something to the table. Cohesive, constructive, that will st stand up under criticism. Like, I'm trying to do with Caleb Williams. That's all. Again, like, yeah. this diva stuff. Like, where the fuck are you getting that from? Where in the <laughs> hell are you getting that from, that he's a diva? Like, come on, man. Bring me something here. Bring me something here. Bring me something here. Just, just don't scream he's a diva. And, like, just go out for that. Like, come on. you got to actually say some, bring something to back it up. He's not a, maybe he's not a diva. Maybe it's just, like, big light skin energy. Like, <laughs> Well, I think here's, here's the problem is, like, you go to, like, you get asked about this stuff. Like, I don't know what's going on with his dad. And I don't know what's going on with the whole, like, and RG3 coming out here and, like, saying you should demand and pull an Eli Manning. I would love to see him not go to the Bears. I don't want to have to root against him. <laughs> like, but I don't think he's going to pull an Eli Manning. Those reports that he didn't want to go to the Bears were spurious at best. Like, I, don't I mean, know. but like, I would, I mean, yeah, I mean, but even if that were true, right? Like, I mean, again, you can label that being a diva, but seeing how they've handled Justin Fields, 
Yeah. Mitch Trubisky like should have been the pick that should have never been the pick, but they did it. But just seeing how they've handled Justin Fields, like I know there's a lot of people that don't, and we'll get to it like in the in the next segment. Like I'm, I know there are plenty of people that think that Justin Fields is not as good as some people think he is. I tend to, I tend to think he's pretty good. I just tend to think that the Bears just didn't know how to manage him. I I I don't. Mm. I I think it's just a matter of here. Here's the two things: is like when it comes to the two quarterbacks. From what I know of NFL sources, the NFL is higher on Caleb Williams than I think most of sports mm-hmm. Twitter is higher on Caleb Williams. So, like, take of that what you will. You, to be honest, I will trust them more than I will trust some people with a Twitter account. On the flip, on the flip side of that, as much as I think we have valued Justin Fields because we're close to that tree, because we and we'll talk about this a little bit in the Justin Fields part. Like, I also yeah. feel that Justin Fields, the fact that he only got a sixth for him. I don't think that's Ryan Poles being out of options or not playing it well. That's just it's kind of, that was kind of his going rate. The well, I think like everyone do not think highly of him. Well, I, I also think it's a thing though. Like when everyone knows you have to trade him, like why am I going to give you a third? Like you're going to trade him. You're going. You're not going to play him. Yeah. It's not going to be a competition. You want to get rid of him so you don't have to deal with the narrative. And I think everyone just shut up. I think they were willing to. I think everyone, everyone in the league was waiting, willing to wait Chicago out to see when they were going to trade him. Exactly. And I, I mean, maybe you could have held less on, leverage. Maybe way you could have leverage. held on to him for to, closer to the season. But like, I don't think that would have been fair to Justin Fields to be like, you have to wait it out, and you don't know what team you're going to land on until we're. Close I mean, to absolutely. The so like yeah they could have they could have held him out and waited until preseason or wait till the season starts somebody loses a quarterback and then all of a sudden justin fields is the hottest thing available you probably could have got more for him i think chicago probably wanted to do something right with him since seeing as they couldn't handle his development well mm-hmm. and then just decided like hey we'll we'll get you out of here for a sixth yeah now they, uh, have six, a, now yeah. they have a lame duck coach and a lame duck GM at the helm. What could go wrong? <laughs> what could go wrong? Rookie quarterback, lame duck GM, lame and duck coach. I, I should probably say this too. I don't expect Fields to um, play unless not something unless, goes wrong. He's not going to hurt. He's not going to start. I do. He's not. He's. Not I don't expect start. him. No, no, I don't expect him to start. But I expect him to play. Russ is. Yeah. I think no, Russ I, is broken. Yeah. But I think I think just yeah. because of the conditional on it that they, they will try to stick with, and from what I've heard of the rumors, like the the Steelers want to work out a multi year extension with Russ, which seems psychotic. Um, but I I don't know what the here's the big thing. I just don't know what the what the what the Steelers are doing at quarterback. They seem to not want to just. They don't either. They, so, they just like, want they're, they, the they're avoiding hitting this else. this like this like reset button as long as they can. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson um, is like living testament that just being a nice person can basically get you whatever you want. So here's the thing. Like, and again, this is why I am so mad when I do the Caleb Williams stuff, because I always have to deal with people having bad information. Like uh, this guy on YouTube making any demands for being drafted or doing a single thing elite is diva like to me. Call it whatever you want. I don't like it. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. That's the thing. You guys get bad information all the time. That was his agent. Who gives a rip what his agent thinks? Like, but that's the problem. You don't know what the F you are talking about. You don't have that information in front of you. You've just made it up. You hear it through a game of telephone and you blame it on Caleb Williams. Like, what can I do with you? You're just coming with with just crap. You're coming with crap on your face and saying you're a princess. Like, I'm sorry, man. Like, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. And if you're saying that, like, he didn't throw at the combine, most quarterbacks don't throw at the combine. Like, what are we? Drake may. I also think, I don't know. I, I, I get why people don't like it, yeah. but I also feel like we have to realize this is sports. And when you're the best at what you do, like, when you know, right? Like, there's, like, to your point, I don't know if there's necessarily a debate. Back in the day, like, I think people forget, like, back in the day, like, people knew who they were picking. And it was just all like going through the draft was like, like it was like well, like a dress rehearsal. Like you knew who was going number one. I think like when Matthew was picked for, by the Lions, like everyone knew Matthew was going first overall. So why why interview? Why give anybody else your medicals? Like no, like I know where I'm going. I don't have to do those things. That's the luxury you get at being him. Like you don't have to like it, but 
Hell, can if I, just, I was can, him. Can I just I, I I mean, I'll just make up shit about JJ McCarthy then. I'll just say that JJ McCarthy doesn't want to like no, he didn't he's too much of a diva because he didn't want to throw. Like I heard JJ McCarthy only likes boneless wings. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't like, know from who. Half of you are asleep when Caleb Williams is playing. So I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about what I know. <laughs> hey, it's true. I'll be I'll admit I'm one of them people. Well, unless there's a big None game. of you a-holes are staying up and watching Pac-12 football. And I get it. It comes on. Definitely late. not recently. Not recently either. JJ McCarthy J. is a closet, closet state, state fan. fan. <laughs> See, there you go. Now we're getting it. I like that one, Darth Tater. I think the whole point oh, of this man. podcast sometimes is that we know what we're talking about because we watch the Lions a lot. That you come to us versus like other sources who are parachuting in. I'm telling a lot of people, and the reason why I get heated up about it is because I see a lot of people parachuting in on USC. Saucy Nugs. Come back, Trapper says Saucy Nugs more. <laughs> Listen, I Actually, like Saucy Nugs, too. They, they have their place. I was just being um, stupid, too. Spe- I since I know we are all um, we're all weird uh, weaves here, I had that Whack Donald sauce. I haven't had it yet. It's good. Is it good? It's good. Here's my problem. I just don't like. I just don't like McNuggets. I think they're flavorless. I, have to I go like to the suburbs to get McDonald's. You don't want to get it here. What do you say, Miko? Oh no! I was, I was gonna wait. Why? Because man, my McDonald's near us is so bad. Like my girl loves McDonald's. Like it's like one of her like favorite. Like go get it, and she's like they mess up every time. And I'm like, welcome to. Oh, bro, they do it here in the suburbs too. Like it's oh, shoot, for real? it's the wildest, <laughs> bro. Damn. I don't get it. Like y'all got nothing. Y'all ain't got no stress. Y'all ain't got no bulletproof glass, and y'all still yeah. can't remember to put sauces in oh, my bag. See, that sucks. Then, well, there's no hope left in the world. Oh, you man. know, dang. Well, her mom did say that even down by her, that McDonald's messed up something with her the other day, and I know she was hot because she don't play about her McDonald's either. I have no. We're not sponsored by. We're not. We're not sponsored by them, but like everybody should be using the McDonald's app though to order. Oh god. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sarah taught me that too, for sure. Bruh, save, save that, yourself uh, some money. <laughs> yeah, I keep having conversations about the breakfast bagels there. Don't get it with the breakfast sauce. Take the breakfast sauce off it. Breakfast bagel. Bro, I haven't had a breakfast bagel from them in forever. Yeah. When I go to McDonald's for breakfast, it's for typically it's a bacon, egg, and cheese, or it's the uh I'm a nasty man, but I eat the pancake witch ones. You know what I'm talking about? What are those called? The McGriddles. The McGriddles, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, well, Ryan's not, Ryan's <laughs> not, not here. Ryan's food. not here to Ryan's defend the McGriddles. <laughs> I'll, I'll, dummy three, I'll dummy three of those, man. A couple hash browns and an OJ. I'm thrilled. Bro, McGriddles, I, so, that yeah. has to be a hangover creation, right? Like, that has to be, like, perfect <laughs> hangover food. Because, like, there's nothing good about it. It's literally, like, a hey. sponge <laughs> and, like... <laughs> protein and cheese like it's it's not nice good as hell though man oh i don't this know this is why Sex i don't sounds... this is why i don't look at youtube because now they're over here being caleb williams lost to, to utah oregon and washington oh, what are we doing here an entire Google. team plays a game and as i just said they ain't get like they were literally i think at one point like the 132nd in the fbs on def- on yards allowed on defense dead so last just... like like literally old dominion wasn't wasn't giving up as many yards as USC on. Uh, I know it wasn't, you. it wasn't uh, that it was like um, plays over X amount of yards. I forget the actual metric, but still like they were literally one of the worst defenses in the, in college football last year, but sure. Blame the quarterback. I guess you want to be low information dummies. But do we think like, if you does, does Caleb Williams like McDonald's? Like that's what we mm. should start asking. Like what's their favorite. Do you like- remember when what's your favorite fast food item do you remember when joe flacco won the super bowl with the ravens yeah and Mm -hmm. next day he's caught that was bad this was back when they had what were they called the uh what were the tenders at mcdonald's called the selects chicken oh yeah chicken selects he was fucking crushing the the chicken selects you know why because he's probably hung over you know you're a savage yeah you were a savage if you're going to mcdonald's again the chicken selects so here's yeah, the like thing, they use those, but they place. use those chicken selects in the snack wraps, so they can't be all bad. No, I mean, but like if you me. just got, if you were just, <laughs> just getting, getting the selects, the selects. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like no snack wrap, just the selects, like as someone that was working at McDonald's during like ever getting just the selects, it was sure. always yeah. snack wraps. 
Yeah, for sure. I might throw like a select or two or some snack wraps on top of my Big Mac large with a with a Coke. Now I'm hungry a little bit. Dang. Oh man, we had like my wife made uh like meatballs and roasted potatoes. Ooh. Oh, so good. On a nice cold day mm. too. Perfect. J-Mo versus Caleb McDonald's off of pay-per-view. <laughs> J-Mo would wax Caleb, man. J isn't Caleb from, is he from California? <sighs> no, he's from the DMV area. It's why I think the commanders oh. are so horny to like, the commanders wish they could buy the first pick from the Bears. I mean, like, yeah, that'd be a nice way to kickstart their. Uh, but but he's yeah. also from DMV. He's, he's from that, like, you know, Virginia, D.C. I forget exactly where, um, but he played high school in, uh, yeah, in D.C. He was born in D.C. Yeah, J okay. D.C. gives him a little more cred, but yeah, J-Mo's yeah. from St. Louis. Would definitely, J-Mo, and listen, I would eat it too. I'm a nasty man. I, <laughs> I drink Fago on here. But when he had the hot Cheetos with the, uh, with the with the rotel oh yeah mm. i was like this man's crazy I but a, i respect I, it i have to put it up on twitter i went to so i went to see dune part two again last night still amazing yes. i saw it in the 70 millimeter yes. imax um nearly fought the person next to me for for laughing during the movie i don't I don't hey, still guard did have me laughing sometimes though, but I wasn't being obnoxious about it. I was that's the like, thing is like half the theater was know. being obnoxious. And it's like, this guy oh. was, I mean, this guy was also laughing during the fall guy trailer. So like his, he was just, oh. this is a 30 year, just primed up on any, any little bit of Marvel slop. He's been fed to just laugh at everything. Um, it's just annoying though. Like you're at an IMAX, which is supposed to be like full immersion. I don't want to be bothered. I'm sorry. Like, IMAX like I'm, I'm paying the premium to to like be immersed here so I can just get just really tore up. But I went to a um, sushi restaurant. There's a wasabi on City Walk at Universal Studio. Um, oh, it started playing already. I was like, what the hell is that n noise? Um, but they have these sushi rolls. They put like mascarpone on them and torch the top. I'm not cultured enough. Cheese? It's no, it's like an Italian cheese. Go. It's an Italian okay, like sweet, it. it's like a sweet cheese. And Thank but you it was for really good. For us. It was like on a roll with like unagi on it as well. It was like really good. Okay. I have to upload this. I won't lie though, man. Still guard did have me geek the whole time though. Like when he was just I like, thought really Javier Bardem's role was very good. I know some people thought he was a comedic <laughs> relief, but um I didn't see No, that. he did he he hit the serious notes too. That's why he's yeah. doing such a good job like cuz it was serious, like when he got mad at them because he was trying to pray. Like yeah. I, he, he hit that hard. Yeah, That's not just too many really spoilers, but you should. Everyone should still like everyone who I have convinced to go see Dune Part Two and make their way through Dune Part One has really enjoyed it. Um, and read the books if you're if you're yes. a dork. Read the so books. So it, it's funny because I feel like I got into this conversation with a friend at work about the idea of adapting movie of uh, movies from books. And mm -hmm. how things get changed, get get moved around. And I actually recommended him a video uh, by Dan Olson, Folding Ideas on YouTube, who's fantastic, by the way. Um, but Dan did a video on the on Ralph Bakshi's animated Lord of the Rings movie hey. um, from like the 70s, which I always remember because every time I'd step into the video th uh, store as a kid, there'd be like, if you look up the poster of Lord of the Rings Bakshi, it's this big imposing Gandalf with a giant sword pointing. It, it's yep. iconic. And I want that poster for my wall, but that's always what I remembered. But the, but the, he talks a lot about Bakshi himself. Cause Bakshi also did a lot of X rated animated stuff like Fritz, the cat um, and heavy tra and heavy traffic. Um, he kind of dipped his toes into like just the insane seventies stuff. But uh, there was a great but about a good half of the video was about the differences between his Lord of the Rings and, you know, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings. And there's like some stuff, Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson is so definitive, but it leaves out some stuff that Bakshi actually hits on. And hit, that's makes kind of Bakshi stuff kind of remarkable. Um, and more about, and there's just more about it. But I guess my point is that, to back to Dune, the books, Villanueva is not really faithful to the book. 
he's really changed a lot of it. I think sometimes for the better. He's definitely like bootstrap Chani Zendaya's role to be more antagonistic, which is something she really does in the second book, not really the the first. Um, obviously, complete like what he does with the uh, spoiler character in the second book. Uh, I mean, in the second part, completely off the grid. He changes a lot of things, but honestly, like it feels like for the better. And I love the book, but Herbert takes a lot of time to explain things. And I think Villain Nueve didn't. And sometimes that's for the better. Like, I mean, even in the Lynch version, you had the Guild Navigators, which are like, if you don't know Dune too much, like Guild Navigators are these like, you can see the video on YouTube, the horribly like mutated things that fold space and time. Um, he didn't include any scene of them or space travel or any of that kind of aside because he just didn't find it relevant to the story he's trying to tell. Likewise, there's no Almost talk of like... What, kind of, but also yeah. not really relevant. Like he's focused yeah. purely on like the political side of things, on the personal side Make it more side palatable for the normal yeah. people. Like it's, it would be like for me, you and Miko, like we'd be like, oh, so, oh, this is dope. That's weird seeing these guys. Like we would get some enjoyment out of it. But like, I feel like you lose some of the normal people when you start showing some like disfigured <laughs> beings warping space and yeah. time. They're like, what the fuck? Is yeah, you don't really, you know? I, I I don't think he's exactly going to get like an extended cut like Peter Jackson did or something. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. Dark, Dark Elf, read much. the books up to God Emperor of Dune, then stop, do not go any further. I agree. Like as much as it, I yeah. love it getting weird, first off, it's incomplete. And I did not unfortunately find that his son, Brian did a good job landing the series. Um, no. Also, also, um, Man, he was really going for something with the Honored Matress. And if you haven't read Heretics of Dune, I'm not going to explain it. So, I got a question. So, yeah. is it, like, universally, like, acceptable that, like, the first one wasn't great? No. No, like, I, people loved, don't I like love it. the first one. I love the first one. I loved it, I... but I understand <laughs> why it was, it was slow. And I kind of equate it to, like, Fellowship of the Rings, because people said that about... They said the same thing about yeah. Fellowship of the Ring back in the Rings back in the day, and yeah. then like uh, Re uh, Two Towers and Return of the King went crazy, and they were like, "Oh, okay, I see why y'all had to do the first one like you did, because you had to lay a bunch of exposition low key." You know what I mean? Because I watched that movie twice in one day, didn't get it. I was <laughs> like, I do not like it. I was just like. I had to I had to Google recently because like everyone's been hyping up the second one and I was telling my wife about it because she hasn't watched the first one and she was like asking me like well what didn't you like about it I was like it felt like I was being dropped in the middle of a story like mm -hmm. it was like it felt like I was supposed to already know things that I had zero clue of <laughs> I think that is going to ultimately Fair. be the failing and criticism and critique of I've landed on that too because I feel like as long as it ran, you, he did need to kind of explain a few things more. You do kind of get dropped in the middle of things, but like Frank Great. Herbert is such a glacially slow writer that works for him in the novel because he is yeah. doing things like explaining how religion has evolved over 10,000 years. He's explaining how um, crazy you, stuff, bro. More, more about the politics of things. This feels like, yeah, you're kind of in episode two of Game of Thrones and certain things haven't been explained. Like I... I just don't, I worry there's not going to be an extended one to really like make up for those shortcomings because ultimately at the end of the day, Dune has always been something, it's not exactly got the rabid fan base of something like Lord of the Rings that Peter Jackson went yeah, out and like talked sure. with fan groups and stuff to and got the buy-in right. from them to get it right. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. Villanueva, like he had a vision for what he wanted to be. But yeah, I agree. Like I, some of the stuff he just didn't, feel the need to explain and either you were supposed to watch a video or just take for granted where you are. I think that has both failings and positives, just like it is that you make a two part movie of one of the books versus like what David Lynch did, which was, I'm going to try to make a three hour movie and get it cut down to two hours. And then you don't understand anything or what yeah. sci-fi did where they just make a, a mini series and it's just awful. He could have given, okay. they could have given more context at the beginning though. I feel you, Miko, yeah. and you're not the first person. No. Like there's people agreeing with you in the chat. Like yeah. it should have been like just a little more context. Hey, this is way in the future. This is how things are going down. I don't think people understood like he could have done a better job at like explaining how threatened 
the both the emperor and yeah uh well, this it, you know, what's this we're so they were so threatened by Atreides. Right. and ahead. i think i think part of it too is like i i don't know what the situation was with them with part two i had heard some mixed reports they didn't even have much of part two greenlit when they made part one which again jackson yeah. you which like means that okay you can't bring in like i thought um who is it pew uh i keep forgetting her first name the one who plays the empress emperor's daughter um oh yeah uh let me see here uh uh, Florence Pugh. I thought she would have been oh, like yeah. a great, like narr. She was a great narrator for part two. I thought she, like something from her and like another scene with, um, with Christopher Walken would have been very good for something like a part one, but because I don't think they had Walken cast at the time. And like, remember part one comes out in the middle of the pandemic as well. Yeah. So I think, I think the, there's going to be a lot of faults that keep it from being something like Lord of the Rings. Part of that is, it, the first part came out in the middle of pandemic. Still, it Dune even uh, Villain Wavy did as best of a job you can with something as tricky to adapt as Dune is. And the second is we're coming in an age where there's going to be no physical media media for this thing, and it's going to hurt it in the long run. Yeah, no, like I mean, I plan on watching the second one the same way I watched the first one. Like I just waited till it was available, like on demand. On I think it was like on Max, and I watched it. So like. That's kind of my plan for Dune too, because like I at least want to see. Like everyone's talked so well about it, I was just like, the first one didn't drive any type of feeling of like, oh, I can't wait to go see part two. So that's, that's kind of just where that. I landed. Also, dark, dark, dark elf said Christopher Walken was not a good choice. As I Emperor, disagree. And I have to agree. I, I, I liked Walken. I liked Walken. <laughs> I, just, I you know what? Couldn't think, I don't know. One of my one of my friends pointed out. We did not do the thing we usually do with future people where we just give them British accents. Except for Charlotte Rampling, because that's just how she talks. True. Like, like I did not mind walking. Like, walking, I think, evinced the same amount of, like, weakness plus fury that I wanted to from an old aging emperor who was losing his grasp. Fair. I mean, yeah, he can play that. And he I'm didn't just, get I'm a ton glad. of time to talk, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just glad his accent didn't come crazy. You know what I mean? From like the, that would have that would have sent me. Like he's like, you yeah, know, do it again, and I'll stab you in the face with a solder. <laughs> you know, like, I yeah, I think I think it is probably as best of a definitive experience as you're going to get. But like with everything in Dune, it's just going to be something that's going to be hard for certain people to penetrate because it is so dense. It's so. It's so weird. It's always been yeah. weird. It's always been something that has had, and in in that regard, space opera before Star Wars is all like that. You go look at like as a, was it Foundation by Isaac Asimov, and Hype, the Hyperion Canticle or whatever it's called. Um, uh, what, what what's what's the name of the uh, yeah the Hyperion Cantos by uh, Dan Simmons. Like this is like. Or even Book of the New Sun, which I love. I love Book of the New Sun by um, uh, what is it? Um, I always forget his. I always forget his name. I, I, Gene Wolfe. Gene Wolfe, like, mm -hmm. which is although that's more like science fantasy. That's like kind of Jack Vance fantasy. But like these things are so dense, so weird, and so of their time. Just things that they don't want to explain themselves because part of it is the weirdness of that, that it just, it makes them harder to do than something like a star Wars or even Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings was always daunting, but there was nothing out of the ordinary that made Lord of the Rings hard to adapt. Right. Dune, they have struggled to adapt with, they've struggled to adapt for almost eight, for almost 60 years because it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> really Ahab, I'm, you... listen, Ahab, I am I'm 100% locked in. I'm still like semi concussion symptom. So if I look yeah. like I'm zoned out, like it's not. Has no, and I know this is topic. what happens when I talk to you. And I think some people want us to get back to it. And I've had my time to geek out a little bit. We've been, I think we've had about like 40 minutes here. So no, this is like the most social I've been with people outside of my family in like the last three weeks. So I'm, I'm gay. Good. Miko. Good. Good. Yeah, I'm ready. Whenever. Uh, any any thoughts on the uh, tournament so far? Which one? NCA. See, that's Marsh the problem. Madness. Like, I, I felt like if I had just said, <laughs> like in years past, if I just said the tournament, you know what I'm talking about. But like, 
Me and it's I haven't watched college apart. basketball like that in a minute. Man. I know, man. Like Same. Michigan State gets in, and I'm shocked about it. But then I find most people are just shrugging about it. It's like nobody really. I saw that fan base yelling at each other. James said something, and then everyone was mad at James, and it was going back and forth. I'm like, man, so I'm, I'm good. I'm about to. Whenever we finish this, I'm playing cyberpunk. I'm not about to watch mm-hmm. no basketball. Bro. Yeah, I've got, I've got um. <laughs> What's what's that new Vanillaware game? Uh, Unicorn Overlord. It's like a JRPG strategy game. I've been loving it on my uh, on my Switch and still playing Hell Divers pe- with friends. See, I thought about that. Rise of the Ronin two like comes out later mm-hmm. this week. I might get that. Yeah, and I know yeah, Dragon's, I might have, I might Dragon's watch Dog like stream that. comes out soon too. I just if it's anything like Ghost of Tsushima, I'll be happy. Yeah, I, I need to pick that back up. I it, never finished it. It is Samiko. It's a gem. It is also Team Ninja, so I also expect it to bust my balls, literally, in difficulty. Oh, good, good, okay. It's not like a Souls game. I don't think it's a Souls game, but it is. I mean, that's never stopped them. Like, I remember playing Ninja Gaiden back in the day on Xbox, and, like, that thing would just rip you in two on how hard it was. Oh, good, okay. Souls games, like, crush your, crush. well, literally crush your soul and your, like, belief in anything. uh, Are we still live, by the way? Yeah, we're on. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I just got some spinny wheel for a second. Okay, I think that's a sign we should probably. Let's get uh, it then. Yeah, Yeah, my wife just came in here army crawling for something. So, (laughs) (laughs) try Thomas Covenant Unbeliever. I the problem for Dune is like when I read it, I was seventeen, and I want to go back and read it again because I want to write something on it. But I am terrified of the prospect of that. I am now thirty-eight and completely destroyed by ADHD. (laughs) Yep. Dude, you're 38? 37. I'm going to be 38 in September. Yo, you look good for 37, 38, going on 38. I, I think that's the camera talking in the low light, but um, yeah. no. I don't know. Morgan you. always tells me that I look good for 34, so I'm always like. No. You do, why man. does my camera you know keep why. doing the auto zoom? I'm trying to figure out. I reset Black like a crack, driver bro. on this thing. In this <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> kept walking for, for, kept waiting for walking to tell the story of the Moors and call someone half <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying, man. That's what kept popping in my head too. I'm like, this freaking guy. But I yeah. don't know, like was... I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be more positive about these kind of things. Like again, like it's nice that I had some like cinema that is like very, it's very earnest, and I appreciate earnest in this day and age. True. Like I, I, I don't like shows that. This could have gone a lot, like, I keep saying this about something like, I don't know, when Netflix adapted Cowboy Bebop, like, there's this thing writers do when faced with serious science fiction and fantasy where, like, Mm -hmm. they stick their tongue in their cheek and they think to themselves, nobody actually thinks this is serious, right? And their writing kind of reflects it. And in a lot of ways, comedy and sarcasm become these these, uh, tools to take the edge off of it, to not think of it as seriously and um it's a crutch and i don't like it and i'm very glad villa nueves was like not with a lot of that it felt yeah i don't know uh chris did you like starfield i i i usually like bethesda games but starfield didn't really work for me unfortunately fair it felt it felt like bethesda's got a lot of work to do I really like Elder Scrolls games, but those, their sci-fi stuff has really struggled. Elder Scrolls will come like when the PS6 drops, probably. PS7, I'm sure. Seven. <laughs> and to be honest, on, I no. it's just not the same Bethesda anymore. Like they keep launching more and more half-baked stuff, and this one was really bad. Anyway, mm. so do we want to talk any more Zeitler in segment two, or should we just dive into the other topics we have? Uh, I've got I've got nothing else to. Yeah. I mean, unless we have his contract details, like yeah, like um. I'm yeah, I don't think now. we have any. There, I don't think any of the details are going to come out until the uh, physical, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, what else? Do I'll we get have into some here? tape eventually. It's gonna be yeah. a DJ reader first. Uh, pass block grades the raven. By the way, more PFF stuff. Um. Or this is from Warren Sharp, I should say. Pass block grades. Zaraven, number two of 83 in 2023. Number four of 84 in 2022. And number four of 88 in... He says 2022 a second time. I think he means 2021. 
Um, just something to keep in mind. Okay. I, st I still love the the amount of the amount of uh, investment they continue to make with the offensive line. Got to. Yeah. yeah, I think this was a good response. I know, I know, like even I was like kind of pro re-signing Jonah, but like when they decided not to, it's like okay, I understand why, like cost wise, but you had to you had to plug that with a quality player like i was i wasn't comfortable going into the draft like well we have to draft someone that's going to replace what jonah did because i wasn't as i wasn't as confident as some that that would be like an easy task to, un, to like to undertake personally no and i think it's going to come with a it'll be you know the signing of zeitler and then the draft pick too just mm -hmm. double down like we know brad holmes likes to do so well, they're in like perfect position to do that literally at every position. They are in the position to do that at corner, edge, receiver. Like receiver, you're probably looking for a starter, right? But like if worse comes to worst, like I guess you can trot DPJ out there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't no, feel yeah. great about it, but you could. Lions officially um, resigned him today, by the way. Yep. So yeah, like there's but like everything can be seen as this could be depth unless they're good enough to just outright start, which is essentially what last year's draft was. You drafted a bunch of guys that could have either been depth, but were so good that they got starter quality snaps. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's and go the into segment two up. then. All right, let's get it. <laughs> there is some... I love what Twitch chat is doing, by the way. I love you guys. <laughs> I've seen us too. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to turn off my camera just one second. I do need to adjust my low light on here because it's getting really bad in here now. So, uh... My little rig light died. Yeah, both of my, both of my like, um, lights died recently. The USB lights I have, they just completely just crapped themselves out. So kind of have to go on Terrible. this until I'm trying to buy a, one that won't die as easily. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to drop like $60 for it. Lord. Yeah. But it's better than just getting these cheap ones that just keep farting and dying. Anyway, let's go. Let's get back into the podcast. All right, let's get it. Pride of Detroit POD cast. We've had some time to ruminate on more of the free agency. We still don't have contract details as of this podcast about Kevin Zeitler, so we'll leave him to the side and most of the other Lions free agents. I want to look around the rest of the division, but first, quick reactions here. We did have one very significant piece of news on the Detroit Lions about contract extensions, and not for players, but for a coach and general manager. Over the weekend, the Lions gave new contract. Actually, I think this was like Friday or Thursday, if I am not mistaken. Lions gave contract extensions to both Dan Campbell and general manager Brad Holmes, extending them through the 2027 season. Um, I believe they had had six-year contracts or so when they both came in uh, at the in. I think it was early tw in early 2020 or so. Uh, original, I'm sorry, 2021. So this is adding one more year to the deal. And as we reported, it probably comes with a raise. Um, but no brainer, right? I think what is fascinating to me about this is there were still so many years left on these contracts. There was no reason to uh do them now so it's a little bit of out of left field but i think again continues to show the confidence they have in this regime and how much they are about like that someone like uh sheila hamp favors stability moving forward that this is a long-term play this isn't something that a couple of bad years and like look i don't think the lions are going to make the playoffs every year especially with how competitive the division might get but it's something saying we, we are secure with you for the long-term future to keep getting guys, keep developing, not to be a, a quick cook for a Super Bowl, but to make a winning long-term organization. So it's 
it's fascinating. It's fascinating in that regard, and it's absolutely like you've this is the right idea to do this. Uh, also a multi-year extension for Chris Spielman, the special team, the team special assistant and basically face of a lot of the team as well. So any thoughts, anything to add here about the contract extensions or yeah, no brainer. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a little bit of a no brainer, right? And I think it kind of leads into what you're saying about Sheila Fordham, uh, basically showing a lot of support behind both of these guys. They came in and, through their first couple years in Detroit, I think they have delivered on everything they probably promised her in their interviews. And I think the best way to showcase your support and, and your belief that they will continue to do that is to, again, like you said, give them a little bit more money, give them an extra year and continue to let these guys cook and continue to let these guys acquire talent and develop talent and hopefully win more games. And, you know, one of the things that I've like hung on to that Brad Holmes said, I think probably in his first or one of his early press conferences, right, is that their goal is to not just, you know, make it to the playoffs and hopefully win a championship, but to keep that window open as long as possible. And I think every move they've made to this point has been true to that word, to to those words. And I think the same thing is true for Dan. Everything that Dan has said, what he wants to accomplish, what he wants his team to be. They have slowly become that year after year. And so, yeah, this is this is great, you know, a, a great show of faith by the organization to keep these guys uh, long term and not to give them any type of feeling that they're not valued here. So, yeah, no brainer, no brainer, in my opinion. And it gives them a chance to, you know, the way these agents operate, it gives them a chance to say the Lions do really well, really well in 2024 and 2025. So probably at the end of that 2025 year that's when Sheila will open up the checkbook again for this time, probably even a long term, you know, sign them through 2030 or something along those lines. And that's the way that way they keep getting raises and that are commiserate, like commiserate with like the top top paid executives and coaches in the league. Right. So I think yeah, that's I'm with you. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is it shows commitment from Sheila and that like she does not mind spending more money on this Definitely. team right now. Like it's 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 refreshing from some ownership versus some other stuff in the Detroit market that where, you know, money is not a, a factor before winning, before culture, before. And I just want to rewind the clock again back to the days where Brad Hall, I mean, Dan Campbell was brand new to the organization where he was just the kneecaps guy and where even where a lot of people were just thinking of him as either a culture guy more than anything or as a uh, just a raw raw kind of guy and I think he's shown you a lot more competence and a lot more well-roundedness than that too and I think it's the Lions got out ahead of a, some other teams who have now tried to look for their own Dan Campbell in a lot of ways imitation has kind of come to the NFL from the Detroit Lions which is very new to see and I mean, like, you can look at some of the defensive backgrounds of someone like a D'Amico Ryans, but then look to, like, uh, uh, Gerard Mayo or uh, Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce, is, yeah. Is, is kind of the big one. Is like, not for their motivation, but for guys, there, there's more of an emphasis now on on culture. I don't know how those will work out. I think Antonio Pierce might be more akin to, like, Dan Campbell coming off the, the Dolphins job. <laughs> So I don't know how he'll do, but still, like, it's it's clear that there's now a second line of copycat thought other than other than the hot offensive coordinator that's come to the NFL. And we've had precursors to it. You had Mike Vrabel, who was a lot like Dan Campbell as well. But for whatever reason, the immediate success of the Lions, I think, has put some owners being like, oh, this this is actually an idea, too, we could do instead. Well, and I, I think it also speaks to, but like, to your point, Chris, about this whole like, topic is like you got both guys getting the extension. So to that extent, you have a lot of teams that are going out here trying to find their Dan Campbell. But forgetting the other part of that is that you also need a Brad Holmes. You need someone that can work in conjunction, not necessarily the same person, but two people that respect each other and have the same vision. So to your point about Mike Rabel. Vrabel had a lot of success early in Tennessee until the GM decided, like, I'm doing my own thing. I'm going to trade away A.J. Brown. I'm going to do this and that. Well, now there's a disconnect. Now there's no, no now there's no longer trust in the building. And so far through these first few years, Brad and Dan have that in spades. And as long as that continues, the Lions will be better for it. 
you have a guy that, that has a, a clear strategy in how to evaluate and prioritize talent and a coach that knows the type of players he wants and the type of system that he can get them in to help them excel. Let's move yeah, on. That was the word that was oh. the word that Sheila and them used at the beginning. Remember collaborative. They wanted this collaborative approach and excellent point, Miko, because that's what they've done from the jump. And it's been it's been really nice to see because it's it's easy to say, but tough to execute. And they've done it really well. Uh, Brad, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and the rest of the staff. But go ahead, Chris. No, I was just going to say, like, I think there's some uh, there's some other news that I kind of want to turn this towards the rest of the NFC North right now. We're going to try to maybe do another an NFC North roundup at some point here. Uh, I'm still feeling out my week right now and uh, coming off how much I've just been <laughs> needing a break myself. But um, it's coming at a time, too, for the Lions with all these moves that the NFC North is changing very rapidly. Um, the only one who hasn't turned over their quarterback now are the Lions and... Uh, and the Packers. Um, Kirk Cousins leaving for Atlanta. I don't think that was a surprise. I did not see the Falcon. I mean, the the money he got from Atlanta is pretty steep. But at the same time, I didn't see a universe where the Vikings and Kirk Cousins were going to come to an understanding on how much money Kirk Cousins wanted, especially guaranteed, and how much the Vikings did not want to deal with that at all or how much they even trusted Kirk Cousins as a long-term option for them. Uh, it's really put the Vikings in a very particular situation. I know they draft high. I think they're what 11th in this uh in this year's draft and I think they're one of those candidates for a for a trade up, but right now they've kind of been left in a little bit a little bit of a quarterback limbo right now. I don't think we expect Jaron Hall to turn into much of anything. And they went out and got Sam Darnold. And I think if Sam Darnold starts for you as the Minnesota Vikings, that's not ideal. So I don't know. Maybe they take J.J. McCarthy. They, they've made some other decent signings, like they went out and got Aaron Jones. But the big question for them is just what do they do at quarterback and what is the future of that team, especially facing down – the Detroit Lions and I mean in most NFC North previews I keep seeing Mika Morgan is like we talk a lot about the Lions the Bears who we'll get to in a second and the Packers but it feels like the Vikings who were once the one you know dominating this this division is just completely shelled up yeah and I don't think <clears throat> I don't anticipate even if they were to take McCarthy they trade up or they take him at 11 you know whatever ends up happening I don't anticipate him starting from the jump. He's 20 years old. I kind of forget that, that he's so young. And let's be honest, even as, you know, someone who likes Michigan, I'm sure you can, he's not the most refined passer. We'll put it that way. We'll be politically correct here. So I do think he needs some time to to get ready and to be, to be a pro quarterback. So even if they were to take McCarthy, I still do think that we'll start to see Sam Darnold at the beginning of the season, um, just because I don't think you're going to throw him to the Wolves. Uh, but yeah, it's they're they're kind of in a precarious spot because they're not in range to get one of the one of the top quote unquote three guys. And if they if they do want to move up there, it would cost them an arm and a leg, right, Miko? Yeah, I would. And to your point, I would, I think precarious is probably putting it nicely. <laughs> hey, I think real. I think the Vikings have like literally uh, like just kind of screwed themselves in a way. Like I don't see how this situation that they're in leads to like definitely not immediate success maybe long-term success if you're able to develop a guy like jj mccarthy or whoever you decide to pick because maybe they don't go that route maybe they decide to do something even more foolish who knows but no sam darnold's not the answer here i don't care how great justin jefferson is and how great he can make any quarterback seem that's not going to equate to wins. And we as a fan base should know that better than anybody because we had that type of dynamic where we had this amazing wide receiver that like Maybe. couldn't be stopped. And we still kept picking in the top three. Like I, I that's man, where Minnesota's going. Man, their weapons. I mean, you're right. Like not just Jefferson, but like Jordan Addison showed himself really well this year as well. They pick up Aaron Jones. They still have TJ Hawkinson. And I don't, 
maybe that's a better place for Sam Darnold, but uh, I don't really see the potential, and I know people will uh, try to. By the way, Sam Darnold is my out for people who try to tell me I'm a USC homer because I have no love for Sam Darnold, and I never have. <laughs> I just but I mean, it's and it's yeah. and it's so and it's not just the quarterback, right? Like Minnesota's offensive line could still be a, a liability. Their defense, they've lost some quality pieces on defense. I know we're specifically talking about quarterback, but like there's a number of reasons why Minnesota choosing to let Kirk Cousins walk to Atlanta is is kind of detrimental to their standing in the NFC. Where like they're they're kind of trending towards Bears territory right now. Speaking <laughs> speaking of the Bears, speaking of the Bears. Um, they did give away Justin Fields for really not much. Uh, traded to the Steelers over the weekend for a sixth round. If he plays, I think, 51% of snaps, it moves up to a fourth round pick. Um, I know this might be a shock to Lions fans, but the league just, I don't think they value Justin Fields. Like, the entire league did not ja value Justin Fields. I know there was a lot of talk um that the Bears could have potentially held on to Justin Fields and reaped the whirlwind of picks, I unfortunately feel like this was the right decision for the Bears to do. Um, and to be honest, it feels like a discussion we were only really having in parts of the Midwest because I remember, I don't know if you saw this, I saw Diana Rossini go on like a Bears podcast and they broke to her this idea that the uh, that there were Bears fans who wanted to keep Justin Fields. And she stops herself first from laughing and then says, are, are you serious? That's the perception of Justin Fields across the entire league right now. It's, it's hard, and I know it's really hard for Lions fans too because like you've seen Justin Fields rip apart this Lions defense. But I don't think there was really much of a future for Justin Fields once the Bears locked into the first pick overall for the 2024 NFL Draft. Yeah, I I think that was pretty much like that writing was on the wall, right? Once we knew that the Bears had the first pick, they would more than likely be taking Caleb Williams. Justin Fields' future in Chicago was pretty much written. But for me personally, like I I can well I can now safely separate Justin Fields as a as a Bears player and Justin Fields as a talent. The fact that Justin Fields as a talent didn't garner even anything close to what Kenny Pickett garnered is ridiculous to me and personally like i look back at it's funny that justin fields is, is going to play for mike tomlin because mike tomlin had a quote and i'm going to paraphrase it when he was on the pivot podcast with ryan clark and that crew where he says he laughed at the idea of coaches who don't like to coach players who don't like to get their hands dirty and try to develop players that's what justin fields feels like is that no one wanted to take the time to tailor their offense or their team to what he does well, which is ridiculous because, like I said, a guy like Kenny Pickett gets a, a much better trade package <laughs> for him versus what Justin Fields is getting. We've seen other quarterbacks. Carson Wentz, for one, once upon a time ago, got a, a King's ransom as a as a as a trade option. So like, it's it's kind of odd. Because I do believe, like, I agree with you, Chris. I think the league universally kind of said, like, hey, we're not giving you a king's ransom for this player that you clearly have to get rid of. But I also feel like there's a there's a semblance of this where the NFL should kind of feel a little embarrassed that you don't have more offensive coordinators. Like, no, I can take what he does on the football field mm -hmm. and put together a, a competent offense. I'm not sure what yeah, to make of Oh, yeah, sorry. Go, go on, Morgan. No, I'm just I'm with Miko there. Um, the Bears, the Bears are kind of just rotten from the top down, man. Like it's very similar to what happened when they took Justin Fields. They have a a coach and a GM that are both more or less on the chopping block if they don't get their stuff together in 2024. Like they're going to be gone, and then Caleb Williams or whatever direction they go in is going to be with it strapped with a new regime that are like, okay, well. If it doesn't work, we can just say we didn't draft this guy, and then on and on it goes. That's just the nature of the business, right? Yeah, I think, I, I think we're 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 going to try to jimmy the pot a little bit, but I they're going Caleb Williams number one. I don't think we need to overthink this. I don't need to hear about like what they could, do. and I think that's the right decision for them. At some point, you have to realize like as much picks as you could get. 
that you can't you can't miss two years on a quarterback prospect. You already missed on 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 CJ Stroud. Like you can't have these top picks and two years straight decide, no thanks, we're gonna punt the ball on getting a new quarterback. I think for the Bears it's probably the right decision to go quarterback for this draft. I think if you're going to get any prospect, Caleb Williams is the one to do it. I don't know how successful he will be. I think there's still questions about uh, what the Bears are as a team, but they're, I mean, they, they went out and get Keenan Allen, and they're clearly trying to set up for success for a young quarterback in getting weapons. Uh, the Fields thing, I, I think I agree with you, Miko. I'm kind of shocked that he didn't get as much as he did. I understand it from the league's perspective. Um, I don't know how much is that the Bears just shooting themselves. I don't think they handled it very well as far as trying to disguise that they were shopping him. On the flip side, I also think the limitations on Fields can sometimes it was going to just be looked at no matter what by other teams in the league. And I don't know how much he will start for the Steelers. They're probably going to take Russell Wilson into the season as their intended starter until he really stinks up the pod. Yeah, and said. I think that's the winning solution. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that's it makes sense from the Steelers perspective, right? Like, mm -hmm. you get to buy low on someone that could have a lot of potential. And at the very least, you get him, again, bargain bin pricing. He gets to learn behind another veteran. And, yeah, you get to kick the tires on Russell Wilson and see if he really has fallen off a cliff, which I believe he has. Yeah. Um, you fear either of these teams more or less after what they've done in free agency. We don't need to spend too much on that. I know I don't know how much you've kept up on. I'm that. sorry, that's that's rude. Less. I mean, way less. Yeah. Less. Of course, well, this is the a Lions I don't, podcast. I, don't, I should. I don't I understand know. what the Packers are doing. The Bears are good in theory. Like if Caleb Williams comes in and is good, then they could the Bears could feasibly be like a pretty good team. But that's asking a lot, even of a, a really talented rookie. Uh, the Packers have done like some weird swaps where I'm like, why did you want to, I don't know. I would have just kept Aaron Jones over, I don't know, whatever, but yeah. And the Vikings, we already talked about them. They're kind of just flailing down there at the bottom somewhere. Yeah. It's just a fascinating thing. This public perception, per public perception being what it is. A lot of people are going into this year saying this might be the toughest division in football in the NFC North. So, but on the other hand, I see a team where, we don't really know what's there in Jordan Love. Uh, we have to see what the Bears are going to do and how they handle a rookie quarterback. And a massive question mark on the Vikings. And for the Lions, like, look, like not every team gets to repeat a division. It's very hard to repeat as a division winner. And the Lions have to prove that they can replicate last year's success because there was a little bit of luck on their side, um, especially in the health department getting down the getting down the way here so it could be up in the air but i still think it's it it's still kind of in the order we left it in i think maybe we downgrade the vikings a bit versus the uh the bears when the standings are done but i don't think too much has terribly changed for the pecking order for this division just yet yeah i think that's probably the best way of saying it the way i said it was very rude the way you said it is way more politically correct <laughs> just like football. I like football and I see more than just this team. But anyway, uh, I think that's where we're going to end it. We're going to have a first bite here later in this week. We're trying to land a Bengals guest. We'll talk about DJ reader. We'll talk about uh, what the new lions tackle was up to before he came from the other cat team out there. Uh, later on, we'll try to find someone to talk about Zeitler from the Ravens. Well, I've got a few people in mind and just more stuff. We're starting to get towards that point where the draft becomes more of a priority. And we will start doing things like... Don't I almost said... It. No, I'm not going to say it. I know Jeremy's not here. He can't stop <laughs> me even if he wanted to. But I could. I could say something that would make him come out of Florida right now. But I'm not going to say it. You know what I'm instead going to say? For myself... At Chris Perfett, Morgan Cannon, find him at mcannon313 and Miko Scott at the Miko Scott and check out their YouTube content all the time. You guys keep making fantastic videos on there and we'll keep breaking down. I'm sure you'll have your Zeitler breakdown here coming up soon, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that we have some like quality signings, film breakdowns are, are yep. soon to be follow, soon to follow. Mock draft. Anyway, see you star side. <laughs>
Recording stopped. All right, we'll stay live for a little bit longer, but um, yeah. Oh, I didn't give the t the take on the Texans uniform. Thank you for reminding me. We'll get to that. I don't like it. Was that How about real? That? Those were, were those, was, that, was that a real leak? I'm. Let's tr let's let's take it for granted that it might be a new leak. Why do, why don't we why don't we do that? Why don't we why don't we think that? Oh, they I haven't are... seen these. <laughs> okay, hold up. Let me uh, let me. Can I turn on share? Can I turn on? Um, are you talking about the Stingley the Stingley picture in like that dusty ass hold on. room they're in? There's, that's not real. That can't be real, bro. I let me let me see if I can find a picture. Um, let me see here. How do I share screen without like? Um. Good boy CJ says, remove his timeout and give Ruby a treat. Oh yeah, no, no, no. He's he's gonna he's gonna need a second. Um, hold on. Let me. Uh, no, that didn't <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. I have to like hold on a second. Sorry. Um, let me do this, this, this. I want to be able to share it while also sharing it with the uh, the stream. So, uh, here we go. There we oh. go. There we go. Hmm. Ooh, their numbers are foul. So I guess the idea is that these are horns on the shoulder. Yeah, but dude, look at that three. That three is ugly, yo. <laughs> what is that? God. Oh no! Oh no! Oh god! Why do, oh shit, dude. We better not. I'll. I'll be. Oh. Ho, ho. What the hell is that? Those numbers are going to be worse to see than ours. That's, that's going to look like a nine. I was gonna say that looks like a nine. Oh shoot! Shoot! I haven't. Sorry, I haven't changed the. Uh, yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to our stream. I forgot I didn't change over the the layout. Sorry. 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 Let me. Um, I was Hold so. Uh, let's see here. Where's just Zoom? Sorry. Um, desktop two. Here we go. Here we go. It's sorry. bad. Here we go. Look at the three guys. What do y'all think about these numbers? Terrible. Yeah, I hate the numbers. This is a leak, by the way, so... But I have no reason to... I don't hate the horn. That That's like a decent little... I, I don't I don't mind the Houston across. I love jerseys, yeah. guys. So this is this is my... We love... Me and Miko both love jerseys. Uh, yeah, I love... AI-generated numbers. Unfortunately, not. They do look AI-generated. That's a Well, good like, point. here's the thing. Something. Like, the things where you would expect to see some AI stuff, like the Oakley up here, or Texans, or yeah. even the NFL down yeah. here, that's all clear. Yeah. His, 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 like, even his even tattoo tattoos. here makes sense. The, well, the and you can see the reflection. And you can see the reflection in the glass right there. Yeah, exactly. like, this AI isn't, this isn't AI. This isn't AI at all, unfortunately. Who leaked this? These are dummies. I have no Come clue, on. but these look awful. I think the numbers make them look terrible. I, like, other than the numbers, I think I could get with it. If the numbers didn't look ridiculous. Yeah. Dude, uh, can, I just do, did the can I do a conspiracy theory? Can I share a conspiracy? Sure. And I want some, uh, for Twitch, I want some uh, tinfoil Ryans in the chat for this one. I'll get Ruby too, by the way. But uh, I want some tinfoil Rubies, uh, I mean, tinfoil Ryans in the chat for this one. I think the Texans are going to repeatedly bomb these uniforms and just keep redoing them and making them look awful until the NFL finally relents and gives them back the, the Oilers, the Oilers, uh, the Oilers hey, logo, uh, branding, and colors. The fact that Tennessee has those the rights to the it's the disgusting, moon isn't it? Is it's ridiculous. Disgusting. Yeah. It's an CJ it's, Stroud and the Warren Moons would be so sexy. It's That'd a war just, crime. It is a effing war. The fact that they also brought those out when they were playing, when they were playing Houston. That's just yeah. like, screw you, screw the Titans, you. Yeah. <laughs> the Titans are annoying, anyways. Like Nashville is yeah. an annoying. Nashville city, is an honest. awful city. People. People really pimp out Nashville, and I have no clue why they. No, I'm. I've been to Nashville once in my life, and I have never wanted to go back. Never. I'm not a country music guy. It's not even. Well, so I was even into country music at the time, but like, the thing is that you realize about Nashville and their commitment to country music is it's fake. Like, this yeah. this became very apparent <laughs> when the um when the little Nas X thing happened with old with Old Town Road. The objection, yeah, yeah, like the one. objection from the Nashville crowd wasn't that it was a cross cross current or who Lil Nas X was. It was that he hadn't paid his dues in Nashville, that he wasn't gone through the system in Nashville, which is so ridiculous and so against country music. And it's always been how Nashville goes. They think they own <laughs> country music. 
And they shunned people like Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson until they tried to claim credit for them. And that's why Billy Ray Cyrus teamed up with Lil Nas X, because they did the same thing to Billy Ray Cyrus over Achy Breaky Heart. Hey, like that they, was a bop too back in the day. Yeah. And, I, didn't, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't hear that same talk when Beyonce dropped her album. Was on yeah. <laughs> no, the other thing Beyonce. too is like, now that's like, oh, it's bachelorette parties in Nashville. Like, here's my hot take on Nashville. It's for people who are too coward to go down to New Orleans and drink. Ooh. I like New Orleans. The food in New Orleans. New Orleans is, is an infinitely better Nashville. Yeah. I don't care how much you like hot chicken. Go to New Orleans. You can get good hot chicken here, man. Go to Dave's mm. anywhere for our Metro Detroit. I mean, even people. out in, even out in, um, I want some Dave's right now. Even out in, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, getting the video up here. Even out in, what do you call it? Um, LA, we have a really good place called Howlin' Rays. Hey, I know Howlin' Rays. I've been there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard of it. It's very good. Uh, let me get the uh, Ruby Cam over here. Hold on. Uh, someone said Ruby has changed. RNYX, I know it was briefly touched on, but is DPJ going to be wide receiver three going into the draft, or does Josh Reynolds still have a chance to be back? They could easily re-sign someone else. Uh, yeah, I think the fact that they haven't already re-signed Josh Reynolds is kind of telling, right? Or they're letting him like kick the tires and see if he can get like something more like long term, you know? Because I'm sure he'd like a a two year. $14 million deal with some more guaranteed money if he could get it. But I think at the end of the day, if he can just get what he gets and comes back to Detroit and plays less, I know that's going to be, that's, I think we talked about that in one of our videos, right, Nico? Like if he yeah. comes back, it, it's going to be, he's going to play less. Yeah. And so like, <clears throat> I don't think DPJ is wide receiver three. No, if he is, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Cause I'm wide receiver five. three for yeah, because I think wide receiver three for the Lions, like that means like with their current setup with Saint, JMO, like you're looking at DPJ having to play X, and that's him playing just about every single snap right now. And not saying that he couldn't do it. I just I think you could draft somebody better right now. I know like I saw like some rumors and I don't know how much you know weight I'd put behind it, but like uh isn't there like a rumor out there that like OBJ is like considered like a target for the Lions? Or no, not not OBJ. Sorry, Michael Thomas. Oh. Like, like oh, there's they has, yeah. got the Dan type crossover. Yeah. So like and I'm not saying that they go the Michael Thomas route, but I just think like the Lions have I think the Lions do have more options at that X position. I think if Josh Reynolds wants to come back, like Morgan's saying, like after you know, kicking the tires on the on the market they would happily accept him back. But I, that's one of the reasons why I think like wide receiver is in play at 29. They, they currently do not have an X. Yeah. That's what I want them to do with the rest of free agency, sign a receiver that could feasibly start and sign a safety that, you know, can be in the mix with Kirby and Iffy and be relied upon. If anyone gets banged up, then I'm good to go. Let's get to the draft. Let's get to the draft. Yeah. It'd be nice to finally get to it, have the streams and everything. Mm -hmm. Did you, are you, what's your, did you figure out, are you coming here? I, I'll sure. talk about it off air. I, I, we need to figure out, like, I still need to hear where we're go going to be. Um, I know, God. I'm talking, I'm talking with Jeremy about that. If not, then I will absolutely be doing this. If, if I don't go, I will still be hosting these streams here for three days, just so we can, uh, more than anything, so I can hang out with Kent Lee Platty and talk, um, and, uh, Hope for Christian Haynes in the draft, a guard out of uh, UConn. Mm -hmm. Monster oh, of a Kingsley. human being. I think he had like a 9-4 on his Raz and um, pure guard and plays with violence. I think this is the first draft that I'm that I'm going to go into that I don't have like I don't have like a long list of favorites. It's like, kind of like hard a when you're down at like 29, right? Exactly, dude. It, it's a way yeah. different calculus. Like mm. usually it's easier to do the math. Like now I have no idea who's going to be there. Who knows? You know? Yeah. There's well, like, a lot even of... last year, like everyone that the Lions picked, like I loved, right? Mm. Maybe didn't love where they were picked, but I loved them as prospects. This year, it's like 
Oh, I like Chop. I think Chop would be great. Chop would be fantastic. Chop's yeah. another one of those guys who I am absolutely in love with. Um, I mean, like, what can I say? I was kind of hoping for Brian Branch all last year, and all of a sudden they just blindsided me with him <laughs> where they did get him. I was kind of, like, giving up on him after getting out of the day one. But I, the the ultimate thing is that Brad Holmes loves trading up for his guys so much that mm-hmm. um, it's just kind of hard for me to sit here and say he won't do that. I know it'll annoy um, some people who do not believe in trading up no matter what, but... I mean, if you've got Quinion Mitchell in striking distance. Oh, that dude's not getting out of the top two. I don't think. There's like, no way. There is so much of a new premium on CBs that I am shocked. Yeah. Like, I I think I know why. Like, we've lost the lockdowns of years past. Like, I understand that Sauce had a really good rookie year. and mm-hmm. But that's why they're going Devin Witherspoon and Sauce Gardner so high is because we don't really have Derek a Derek Sting- Stingley? There's not a lot of guys like Darius Slay or or um, uh, Sh- Richard Sherman or or Darrell Revis out there anymore. Like yeah, you kind of have feel to like put the... a draft premium on that and hope these guys pan out because usually CB is very tricky to see them pan out. Yeah, I feel like corner is kind of like the new wide receiver. Where like you remember like everyone would take a wide receiver high just because you're just like oh like. Even if it doesn't work out, like, at worst, he's, like, wide receiver three. Like, I feel like people are like that with corner now, where it's, like, even if he doesn't turn out to be CB1, he could still probably be our CB2. Yeah. I mean, it's just – but th- that's that's why when people say the Lions really need a CB1, I'm like, that's cool to say that, but that's really hard to pull off these days, especially with where they are drafting. Like, you have a position where there is such a new premium placed on that position – and the top talent in the draft. Like, we're talking about a guy from Toledo out mm-hmm. of the reach of the bottom quarter of the draft. He's not playing for a big old university. He's playing for Toledo. It's not like what it was with Stingley or... Actually, where did Sauce Gardner play again? I'm trying to remember. He played Cincinnati. for... Cincinnati. Cincinnati, but still, like, that's, you know, bigger school than, than Toledo playing in the MAC. MAC isn't exactly a conference that has kept up with things over the years. Well, that's why I even bring up Derek Stingley. Cause like, didn't he get drafted like top five after Derek Stingley got drafted? I mean, what, like after not even playing the year that he got drafted, <laughs> like he got drafted, he like got based drafted, off of his he sophomore got drafted year. Third. Yeah. Like based off of his sophomore year, basically yeah. started then, as a freshman at LSU. Crazy man. That was, where did yeah, Patrick Sertan get uh, drafted again? I want to say he was, Top five want, or something. I, I want to say that was top ten as well, like yeah. seven, eight. Yeah, hold on. I need to. I need to actually search for the problem. Is Wikipedia immediately gives me his father? Um, he was picked nah. nine. He was picked nine in twenty twenty one, and that's coming off of like COVID years. Yeah. Yeah. So like, some of these corn, like yeah, like I. That's why like I'm not expecting the Lions to get a corner at twenty nine. Right. I think they're I think they would be just as happy going the Brian Branch approach, honestly. Like if there's a corner that we really like, we'll try to get him on day two. Yeah. If we have to trade up to get the corner we like on day two, we'll we'll do that. But like we're going to take whoever the best player is mm-hmm. at twenty nine. It's just it's tough. I feel like we're gonna get to that second tier of players pretty quickly. And if you're hoping for certain players, you're just gonna see them move off the board more than you think. Um because I know, I don't know, these mock drafts have been kind of all over the place for the Detroit Lions as well. In, um, yeah, like I've seen I've seen some mocks that have had like Chop at 29. And like, I'm maybe I'm just not super familiar with his game, but I'm like, how does Chop fall to 29? I feel like he's good enough to go, maybe I, not like, I think he helped like late teens. I think he helped himself in the draft. I mean, in the combine, but I remember coming yeah. into the combine. I think what I said on the combine preview podcast was nobody seems to have a good grip on chop robinson i think uh who was it one of the one of the athlete i mean one of the athlete, i think brugler had him as one of his freaks but then there was someone on espn who like didn't even have him as a day one guy who didn't i mean i i think didn't even put chop robinson in his, in his top 50 players yeah there was like such a weird yeah. variance based on his game but i think he put a lot of that to bed with how he performed at at the combine 
but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. We'll have to see if, you know, I, I'm not as familiar with his tape yet or anything, but I would be very happy if the Lions did, did draft Chop Robinson. Yeah. I'm not as high on Darius Robinson. I know, like, a lot of, you know, Lions fans are. I get, like, the local connection. I watched some of his tape. He He's definitely the type of player that I could see the Lions drafting, for sure. Big edge, sets the edge well in the run. But, like, that dude probably should be playing D-tackle. Like, in reality, like, I don't think he should be playing edge. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to play that big end along with, like, Pascal, and you already, that's what you have Davenport for, and, you know, that list kind of gets long, and you want to have bodies, but I, I kind of agree with you. It's a, He might be a little redundant, but I don't know. That's can I a ask, tough thing, too. I wish, oh, go I... ahead. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, like, can I go completely off the wall here and do something really bonkers? What? How would we, like, I'm trying to think in places where Brad Holmes might just completely zag me out of my mind. Because I know they took Hendon Hooker. But I look at a guy like Spencer Rattler, who I know in my heart of heart is going to fall to late day two maybe probably day three. And do you take a flyer on someone like, because Hendon Hooker is fine, but I'm curious where they think long-term for their quarterback decisions. And do you maybe try to get, like if they took someone like Spencer Rattler, I would, yeah, I think, I think I see some people be going, uh, I'm just, I'm going weird here. I'm not advocating to take Spencer Rattler. I'm just trying to go weird. I mean, yeah, we're talking about like just straight up like the hell we doing here. That would be that would be the one that like honestly any quarterback, any quarterback that they would to take again, because I it would immediately raise the question on. Did you yeah, not like what you saw in practice out of Hendon Hooker? <laughs> mm. Right. Like, yeah. Outside of I mean, and I feel like this is always the case, and I think, you know, we <sighs> quarterbacks that aren't taken in the first round. Like, I, I can't, wasn't it Kentley Platty that, like, had, like, the breakdown of, like, how far off the drop-off is and, like, quality of players that you're getting? Like, if you don't take them in the first round, like, they're, you're not finding good quality starters, potential starters, or even good quality backups <laughs> in those later rounds. So, like, whether it's a Spencer Rattler, a Bo Nix, a Michael Penix, like, nah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if if teams didn't want you in the first, bro, I don't want you in the fourth or the fifth. <laughs> that Chris is a contrarian, never noticed. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm never I'm never one who asks the hard questions. Never. But Spencer Rattler was nasty business. That kid seems like a complete turd. I mean, he Just was like, when oh. he was at like say Oklahoma, but I think following his story, he's he fascinates me in the draft just because like where when he went to South Carolina, like it felt like he finally had a come to, had a had a road to Damascus moment where he just like realized how badly he had effed this up, and I thought he played very well at um, I mean not top quarterback prospect worthy, but enough for a team to maybe like take a flyer on him when how he played and handled himself at South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, I don't think they're they're not going to sit. They're not going to risk any. They're no, not, not the Lions take a flyer assets. on him. I'm just. I was just doing a. You know, I, I'm <laughs> thinking like, what is the position that would shock you the most? The Lions to draft because I don't think it's quarterback. I think it's probably linebacker. But I don't know. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like linebacker or um. I mean, yeah. If they took another running back, I I would seriously be like, the hell are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Early. I mean, late, Agreed. late running back to re- to replace like Zonovan Knight or Craig Reynolds. I could see that, but yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, once you get to like day three picks, like once you're like sixth, seventh yeah. round, like we're we're just Whatever. throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna get out of here though, guys. I'm hungry. And I wanna... Yeah, I think this is a good time for us to kind of wrap up anyway. And uh, I've only had breakfast today, and I'm trying not to eat crap. And unfortunately, I think this might be the Taco Bell uh, run. There you go, man. Make it happen, Captain. Hell yeah. All right, guys. All right. Have a good uh, night, let's guys. See here. I know. I know, good boy. You're resigning. I'm not going to let you resign. <laughs> uh.
Um, let's see here. Zoom, one person. All right. Uh, thanks. So one second here. I'm going to... Are you leaving as well, Miko? Because I'm about to try to yeah. get us out of here. Let's yeah, see. I'm, I'm going to bounce too. Oh, VC. Uh, what about VC? Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, good, good boy tries to throw me off all the time. I don't see anyone worth rating right now. I certainly don't have the same kind of things as Jeremy do. So we'll just close up stream. Let's close it up here. We'll see you star side. Um, oh, Zonovan resigned. Okay. I thought you were. He did, yes. Good boy. CJ. CJ. CJ, do we have to tell you about how to use a hyphen in resigned? Oh no. You of all people I have to do this with. Thought you 